Part 3 of Federalist Number 34 says, Paragraph 4, To form a more precise judgment of the true merits of this question, it will be well to advert to the pro proportion between the objects that will require a federal provision in respect to revenue and those which will require a state provision. We shall discover that the former are altogether unlimited and that the latter are circumscribed within very moderate bounds. In pursuing this inquiry, we must bear in mind that we are not to confine our view to the present period, but to look forward to remote futurity. This is beautiful, this, this word, I love it. He says to look forward to remote futurity. We have to be, keep our eyes open. In the future, we don't know what events will happen. Remember in first part, I showed you the word contingency. It says we don't know what's going to happen in the future. So the federal government has to be able to deal with issues that will come up. Okay, I'll con continue reading. Constitutions of civil government are not to be framed upon a calculation of existing exigencies, but upon a combination of these with the probable exigencies of ages, according to the natural and tried course of human affairs. Nothing, therefore, can be more fallacious than to infer the extent of any power proper to be lodged in the national government from, from an estimate of its immediate necessities. There ought to be a capacity to provide for future contingencies as they may happen. Okay, remember this word contingency? Let me read it again. There ought to be a capacity to provide for future contingencies as they may happen. And as these are illimitable in their nature, so it is impossible safely to limit that capacity. So it's this word that he's reminding of them of. It's a future event or circumstance which is possible but cannot be predicted with certainty. So let me reread this. There ought to be a capacity to provide for future contingencies as they may happen. And as these are illimitable to their in their nature, so it is impossible safely to limit that capacity. It is true, perhaps, that a computation might be made with sufficient accuracy to answer the purpose of the quantity of revenue requisite to discharge the subsisting engagements of the Union and to maintain those establishments which, for some time to come, would suffice in time of peace. But would it be wise, or would it not rather be the extreme of folly to stop at this point and to leave the government entrusted with the care of the national defense in a state of absolute incapacity to provide for the protection of the community against future invasions of the public peace by foreign war or domestic convulsions. Domestic convulsions, he's talking about insurrections, rebellions. If we must be obliged to exceed this point, where can we stop short of an indefinite power of providing for emergencies as they may arise, though it be easy to assert in general terms the possibility of forming a rational judgment of a due provision against probable dangers, yet we may safely challenge those who make the assertion to bring forward their data and may affirm that they would be found as vague and uncertain as any that could be produced to establish the probable duration of the world. Observations confined 
to the mere prospect of internal attacks can deserve no weight, though even these will admit of no satisfactory calculation. But if we mean to be a commercial people, notice this, this part is important, saying we're going to be doing commerce. And if we mean to be a commercial people, it must form a part of our policy to be able one day to defend that commerce. The support of a navy and of naval wars would involve contingencies that must baffle all the efforts of political arithmetic. So we're going to be a commercial nation, and when you're a commercial nation, do a lot of commerce on the seas, you have to have a good navy. And you just don't know what's going to happen. Who is going to capture your ships? If you're weak, uh, what they'll do with their crew? And all these things. He says one thing might let to, lead to another, and it might just not be a naval war anymore. The country that you're fighting with on the seas, they might decide to invade your country. So he says, we, need, we don't need to tie up the federal government's hands by not allowing it to tax individuals.